Thank you very much. I do around 200 keynote presentations every year. So normally I don't get very nervous, but today I am. <laughs> because today I'm not going to talk on, you know, about my expertise areas. Today I'm going to talk on behalf of the 10,000 kids in Denmark who don't feel that their life has any meaning. And I'm talking on behalf of the 15,000 kids in Denmark who live apart from their parents. And every day, they fight against all odds in a traditional school system. And they don't feel that they fit in at all. And an awful lot of talent is wasted. And can you imagine how high these numbers are globally? If I was asked to describe my whole life in just one picture, I would choose this picture. Because just like the boy here, I've been trying my whole life to do something that people have considered as being impossible. Systems around a child have fantastic opportunities to both empower and ignite children. We look for traditional talent To be honest, you lose kids like me in the system. I know that we talk a lot about this, but we talk this topic to death, and we do this little. Let me share my story with you. I was born in Morocco in 1975. I was four years old when I received my Danish citizenship, but it took me more than 14 years to be allowed to be baptized, Sulaima. Why? The reason being was that several priests thought that I would have a terrible life with that name, so when I was a girl, I looked different, I felt different, and not even my name was accepted. I've always been incredibly ambitious. Do you remember these small friendship books? Girls write, you know, their visions for the future and their favorite color. When I was a little girl, I wrote that my future should be about getting a really good education, earn a lot of money, and have a great impact on lives. <laughs> and people that just laughed at me, you know? You know why? No one in my mom's family have ever even graduated college, so why should I? Every time I was ambitious, people told me to get realistic. A few years ago, I was announced as one of the 10 role models in Denmark because I've been beaten all odds. During the past years, I received all different kind of both national and international recognitions. And this year even, I was announced as one of the very few, one out of 192 young global leaders announced by World Economic Forum. Who would have thought that? As a child, I had a natural passion for learning. But I wasn't really good at following rules. Actually, I always break rules and I don't fit into boxes. As a person, as a child, I had a lot of drive and energy. And an adult can turn this on or turn this off. I remember in fourth grade, a teacher had enough of me, and he said, you know what, Sulaima, slow down. You are a girl, you are dark, and your name is Sulaima, you're never gonna reach very far. Fourth grade. Just there, I decided to prove him wrong. This situation really made me stronger. But what about all these kids for whom a situation like this would destroy them? I admit, the following years was really a mess. I ran away from my parents when I was 13. I moved away from my parents when I was 13. I was placed at children's home, foster parents, I came into institutions for young people, 13 years old. 
I was thrown out of school in seventh grade. My teacher just came and told me that I was no longer welcome in the school because I had such a bad influence on the other students because I was that kind of girl that ran away from home. So when I was 14, I even considered suicide. When I was 15, my uncle bet my mom that I would probably become a teenage mom before I was 17. Then I turned 16 and my life changed because Ebbe came into my life. And this is Ebbe Kroh. Ebbe was my teacher at business college. Most of us can point out one or two people who have had a great impact on our lives. People that really stood up for us and told us that we have a talent. Normally it would be your close friends or family, but that's not always the case. Ebbe could have chosen to do nothing because she was just my teacher. But he was the first teacher, he was the first adult who really gave me identity. And most important of everything, he gave me dignity. He was the first teacher who really saw me. And he convinced me that my, my purpose in life had a higher purpose than just trying to survive the next day at school. And he convinced me that I had a talent. No one have ever told me that I have a talent. I was 16 years old. And he convinced me that I have a talent within communication and leadership and that I have emotional skills. And he even convinced me that these skills will be highly needed in the future. And I believed him. So right there, he really pushed my I can button. Up until that day, all my teachers always told me to shut up. And my point is, you can so easily become someone's epi too. Today I live with Brian. I've known him for almost 20 years. We are married. We live in Copenhagen, the capital of Denmark. We have two kids. And I was actually 31 before I had my first child, so shame on you, Uncle Cern. <laughs> because I had to finalize my MBA from Copenhagen Business School. And my MBA allowed me to go to fine schools like Stanford, Berkeley, and Shanghai University. And I just came home from Indian School of Business. And next year, I go to Harvard and Yale. Who would have believed that? Yesterday, I asked my son Storm, Storm, what are you going to do with all your savings? And he has a lot of savings because he gets one kroner every time I swear, so he has a lot of money. <laughs> and he said, Mom, I'm going to the moon. Because to him, life has absolutely no limitations. And shouldn't we all agree upon that all children should be allowed to dream? We shouldn't tell them to get realistic. The way we work is changing. I admit this is the favorite picture of Brian, <laughs> but um, the way we work is changing. What skills do we need in the future? Do you know that? Do you know what to look for? Do you know what skills is needed? I mean, if you take a very, 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 very low-tech product like a pen, even a pen, no one in the world knows how to produce such a simple, simple product like a pen. We only know how to produce parts, but no one knows how even to produce a simple product like a pen. So what does this mean? It means that the most important competences in the future will be your ability to work with others so that you can solve the problems faster and in a much higher quality than you can by yourself. This means, however, Researchers have found out that the higher IQ you have, the lower emotional intelligence you have. And your emotional intelligence controls your ability to work together with others. So for the first time, it's really good not to have a high IQ. Children like me, we, perhaps we don't have the whole, highest IQ. We might not even be good at anything from school. I learned absolutely nothing at school. 
but I have a really strong ability to network and to build relations to people because that's the way we survive. And you know what? These skills are highly needed in the future. So don't lose us in the system. For the past 20 years, we have discussed the danger of being stressed. Companies have developed lots of strategies to make sure that you don't get stressed. And we discuss work-life balance. But you know what? I'm not worried about stress. I'm seriously more worried about people being bored. Recently, Gallup made a survey in among 1.8 million people from around the world about job satisfaction. Surprisingly, 80% of these people told that they don't feel passionate about their job and they don't feel that they're using the key competence of their job. So a lot of us choose to live a non-dignified life. I really hope that we are the last generation that accepts to have a job that we don't care about for a manager that we don't even like. We shouldn't pass this on to our kids. We're going to work in a new way. We need to discuss what is a successful life. We need to reframe what is a successful life. Because I know that Denmark is supposed to be, you know, the happiest nation in the world, yet we are heavy users of Prozac. And we are that nation in the world where most people die alone. So something is wrong. Tell me, honestly, how many people do you actually talk to every week? Researchers have found out that you only talk to three people per week. When you turn 45, it's only two per week. Yeah, I know that you talk to a lot of people, but how many do you really, really, really talk to? How many people have you looked into the eyes yesterday? When was the last time that you smiled at a, danger, at a, at a stranger? Do we really listen to each other? Do we, do we really see each other? We are too busy. Can I ask you? What are we busy about? What do I do? I've chosen to join Global Dignity Day. That's an organization. We are right now present in 40 countries. And we believe that if we are going to change the world, we need to start with the children. We believe that every kid should have the chance to be seen, to be heard, to find their real talent and know how to embrace their talents. So it's our vision that all kids in the world, at least one time during their life, should have a Global Dignity Day, where people like me join them at their school, tell them our story, and tell them how they can go out and take their world. So what I'm asking, all your TED lovers, join the movement. Go out and pour out dignity. And remember, you may not always have a comfortable life, and you may not always feel that you are a role model, but you are. And people are, they look up to you. And my point is, you may not be, you may, you may not be able to save the whole world at once, but I promise you, I really promise you, you can save a life today even. Go out and be someone's epper. Thank you very much for listening so carefully.